Hey Fujimi model kit builders, well Chibi Maru model kit builders. So I usually don't even have introductions to these types of builds because there's not much to talk about. But this one, I was looking at the box, it says 1943. And it turns out this is that Capcom video game, 1943. And I played this many a time and it's all of its variations and stuff. So essentially what this is, is a way for Fujimi to put this model ship out again. The original one, which I believe might have been the very first of the Chibi Maru series, is quite expensive. And even this was quite expensive. But uh, I like the fact that it's going to come with this airplane, because that's what 1943 the video game is about. Flying airplanes and taking out all sorts of uh, enemies. Okay, so it's taped together. It says PlayStation Network. Unfortunately, I don't see any date on here. Uh, it just says 30th anniversary of Capcom, but I don't know when that is. Uh, maybe you can see a date, but I'm not seeing... Oh, wait, 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 2014. Okay, so this is actually... That's why it's expensive. It's already 10 years old. Okay, well, let's open this up. interesting the plane is brown that, that actually makes no sense <laughs> I don't know why they wouldn't mold that green all right uh, okay this phys there's stickers not decals these are stickers for the airplane hopefully they'll stay stuck they're 10 year old 10 years old now the adhesive here's the instructions very similar to the chibi maru things and uh, yeah color paint recommendations. You might have to use a translator. I don't even really care anymore. I just paint them in the vague similarity of that. And then you just gotta look at some numbers and arrows and put them all together. Okay. Oh, one thing I will note though. Don't put those in there unless you wanted to float in a bathtub. These tend to stress mark the hull. So I don't, I don't put those braces in there anymore because the the top deck doesn't even touch those pieces, so there's no reason to put them in unless you want it to float. I built the Musashi, so this is all very similar to me. The airplane, yeah, that's not many parts. And they're the runners and stuff like that. All right, physical stickers, not not good again. Uh, they're gonna peel up, so I'm gonna end up painting the hull. The only stickers I'm gonna use are the flags. All right. Okay, well. I guess that's it. Clear parts. Oh, these are maybe the propellers looking like it's flying. Very interesting. I think this is a P-38. P-38 Lightning, correct if I'm wrong. Maybe I'll look it up later. Okay, so I'm going to fast forward. I usually fast forward the clipping and the painting very quick, like 16 times. And then when I start putting things together, I slow it down to four times. So you can actually slow it down to real time if you want, or much slower and watch the build. All right, we'll get back to, to the end.
While this spins around, I'm going to read some Wikipedia. So the Yamato and her sister ship, the Musashi, which I did build the model kit of that, these were the largest battleships ever made by mankind. Uh, this thing had nine 18-inch uh, diameter shells, uh, nine cannons, each shooting an 18-inch diameter or 46-centimeter diameter uh, charge. So it's crazy. It was generally it was basically designed to fight multiple battleships at one time. It was built in secrecy as well because uh, Japan didn't want the Western forces to know they were going to have the largest battleships ever. Uh, this, these things weighed over 70,000 tons when fully loaded. Uh, the length of it was 263 meters. Uh, the beam was 30, almost uh, 39 meters. And then let's see, four turb steam turbines could 
do 27 knots, which is around 50 kilometers an hour or 31 miles per hour. Okay, yeah, a whole mess load of guns as you can see. Yeah, this isn't even all of them, of course. So those are the only two images I could find of this ship. Uh, the ship was actually built quite quickly because it was in secrecy. Uh, it was laid down in 1937 and then finished in 1940, so only three years or four years. And then ultimately it was sunk by American airplanes in Operation Tengo in April of 1945. It was named after the old classic name of Japan and also a province uh, found in Japan as well. Uh, right, well, let's uh, talk about the model now. Okay, as usual, it did have some plastic cross members that I don't put in because they just cause stress marks in the hull and they don't support the deck anyways. So I skipped that stuff. The deck I just used Tamiya panel liner and just did about three coats of brown panel liner to make it this brown color. Uh, I did obviously have to paint the white on here. That took like five coats because white is tough to cover stuff up with. A little silver in those uh, signal lights, so sky blue for those windows. And then this one came with foil stickers. So this one, and then I, I took Google Translate to this and it says irrationalism. So I'm sure that's not a proper translation. And I don't even know if this thing belongs here, but I couldn't think of anywhere else for it to go because it's vertical text. So where else would it go, right? right? Maybe here, I guess, but there's only one of them, so. Anyways, I stuck that on there. This is probably the one uh, Fujimi Chibimaro that has the most playability. Uh, so the Musashi also has uh, the same turrets here, but these will all rotate and they don't really collide, at least on the front end with anything. The rear one though, it will, is gonna collide with this thing a little bit. So that's, that's about as far as that goes. But all these bottom, these five bottom sets of guns, they will all ro rotate. Uh, I didn't glue them. I wouldn't really move these because you'll probably break those little machine guns off, but these cannon ones, yeah, you can you can spin them around and pose them as you see fit. So that's interesting if you want to actually play with this thing, but I don't really want to do so. Okay, uh, yeah, not much I glued the propellers on as usual because they will fall off. These are just a friction fit. They're really tight, so you want to scrape the peg down a little bit. And maybe you want to consider gluing these. Oh, no, see, look, so tight I just broke that peg off. So I'm gonna have to glue that on permanently now. All right, this also broke. Uh, just just trying to clean it up. They had a lot of molding flash. So just trying to clean it up, it snapped in half. There's, there's the break right there. So that's problematic. In fact, there was a lot of extra flash on many of these parts. So I, you're gonna have to clean up some stuff. In particular, like putting these little guns into these housings, you got to trim off the sides a little bit. They're just too tight if you don't. So you got to sand those down a little bit. See, here's that extra flash I was talking about. So uh, I guess the mold was pretty old. Okay, uh, so the airplane though, this was a poorly designed airplane. Mainly because the propellers are not meant to rotate whatsoever. Uh, they literally are recessed into the the screen fairing, which is part of the body. And I didn't realize that for a long time. So I was kept on wondering why I couldn't squeeze it in evenly. And it turns out there was extra molding flash there. So you, you, you got to sand down this green area. Or really it was brown when I first started. There's a recess there, a recess there. There's basically a recess for all three propeller blades. So... I don't know why they just didn't make the, this thing stick out far and you can pose the propellers wherever you want, but it's literally meant to be only in this position. It did come with these two clear ones though, if you want to, uh, you know, make it look like it's flying, it'd be like that. But again, see those three little, like, bumps? Those bumps are supposed to, are supposed to rest in those recesses of the body. So it took quite a while, in fact, my paint's all messed up because I didn't even realize that. And I just ended up scraping off the yellow paint of this. And now I'm going to leave it at that. One thing that's odd about this is there's no way to display this. It doesn't have a hole in the bottom for like a flight stand or anything. It just, that's it. It just sits there, right? It's quite large, obviously, compared to the, the battleship. 
Uh, the stickers are still quite adhesive. I, I should have clear coated over them, but I already put the canopy on, so I uh, can't, can't go back from there. Alright, so it's a cute little airplane and all. It's just, uh, you gotta be mindful of this. You're gonna wanna sand out those recesses for the propellers and, and realize the propellers are not meant to spin. Yeah, uh, so yeah, I painted that. I basically, the only stickers I used were these two flags. Everything else I, I painted, although you could use the foil stickers, but the deck is so three dimensional, I think the peel, they would just peel off, so yeah. So, some uh, comparisons. So, here's the Musashi, and this is the old Musashi. Uh, later on, it ended up getting all these extra guns, like on the, the Yamato, but this one has two of the giant cannons the second large cannons on the side, so it's quite different, you know. So obviously they're the same hull, pretty much. Uh, this next one is the Issei ba battleship, and it seems to be a much older design where the, the guns are literally in the hull, kind of like those old ironclad ships, like the Merrimack and the Monitor. So that's quite interesting. And it's definitely smaller, as it should be. And the last battleship I've built is the Fuso, which again has hull mounted cannons that don't seem to, I don't know, I guess maybe they will tilt upwards, maybe. Yeah, I guess so. That's probably what all this white stuff I think is maybe cloth to hide the mechanism or something. So, yeah. Okay, so obviously the Yamato and the Musashi are quite large, as they should be, being the largest battleships of all time. Sorry, I don't have a, a spin thing, so. So if you like the Yamato as a real ship in real life and you want to learn a little about it, I have to recommend this movie. I saw it on, I don't know, either Amazon or Hulu or something like that, so it was free to watch. The Great War of Archimedes, and uh, it talks about the political story of how this thing was built. Uh, basically, there was an underbid for uh, the battleship, and so the General Yama Admiral Yamamoto hired a mathematical genius to basically reverse engineer the battleship, even though this math math mathematician never knew what the battleship looked like that was being proposed. And so ultimately in the end, he ended up designing the Yamato and he was just a math, math genius. He wasn't part of the Navy or anything like that. It was quite fascinating. And then the representation of the Yamato and stuff in the war was finally, you know, revealed in the end of this movie. So I can't, I, I gotta recommend that movie. You really gotta check it out. The Great War of Archimedes. So yeah. Okay. All right. Well, another uh, fine uh, model kit. Uh, one, one little nuance though is the propellers and stuff. You can clearly see they're lower than the hull. I don't know why they do that. Like why wouldn't they just make those propellers smaller? It's a cartoon or raise them or make the hull deeper. But anyways, it tilts a little bit. And yeah, I guess you got to just have this sit, sitting on the water. I guess it, maybe it went down. All right, so even though this is the greatest ship in the Fuji, Fujimi Chibimaru lineup, this is not the end of the videos. I still have a bunch of other ones that I have to do. So in particular, I have two of them that have photo etch pieces. It's just that I'm not even home right now, and I don't want to have commit a bunch of time to a model that might get destroyed when I try to bring it back home. But anyways, at least two more ships. Probably, uh, I think there's also a few I just don't have, so... Hopefully we'll see you in the future. Thanks for checking this out. See you in the next Tune Boat video.